Hello my fellow crafters and welcome back to Inspiration for Cards. Today I'm going to be making uh, two pages for my planner, but it's not just any pages. Uh, I don't know if you've picked up on it, but there's a new release from Esther Gloss in the Planner Essentials collection and it's fantastic. I am absolutely in love with this new collection and I'm really looking forward to playing with it and making a lot of different pages with it. Um, today I'm actually going to be making two pages using these fantastic dies. So let's switch to my workstation. So here we have it. We have two, uh, three different uh, sets here. Uh, one is an older set that I've used today and I, I've used that, it's the Planner Essentials 4. I've used that to cut out the base pages, but that's not the big new release. That's these, and it's just two die sets from this new release. I've, there are many more, which you will see in different videos, but today I'm gonna to be working with these. And I'm gonna start with this one. Um, it's a beautiful page with all sorts of fruit, summery, holiday vibe. Uh, so I'm going to be starting with this one and the second one will be a bit more elaborate. So I'm going to do a simple page and a more elaborate one. This one is stunning as well. But okay, let's start with this page and we're going to have some fun with this. So um, I've cut out all the different elements. I'm going to put this to the side and I will show you the different elements that I've used. Um, but I've got already some things prepared not to make this video too long because, yeah, who's waiting for that? So I'm going to be using different stamp sets. These are two stamp sets that come with the new collection as well. I'm going to be using those. This is a whole reinforcer that comes from the Variety Pack 1. Um, so I've used that. And then I will show you what I've done. So I've already uh, cut out the base page. I've already cut out the page with the citrus fruit. That's this one. And what I've done, I took a piece of paper. I've put this piece on top of that, like this. And then I've traced around it. Then I fussy cut around it. So you get a piece like this. Um, so I've kept this as an example. Um, actually, I made a mistake here because it was slightly too short. I've got this part too short, but okay, never mind. Um, but this is what you get, and this fits behind here perfectly. So you trace around it, and then you cut within the lines, and you've got the perfect fit for this page. Because what I like is that the inside of these fruits have a different color than my background page, and that's when you get this. But I'm not done yet, because what I'm gonna do, but I need to get my stamping mat for that. So I'm gonna get that out, that's the uh, alt new stamping mat. I'm gonna put that on my work surface and then we're gonna do some stamping because I want some stamping on this side. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pick out some of the stamps from here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take these stamps and put them on my stamping block. All to the side here. Make sure that it's the right side up. You can read the text actually and it's not mirrored or um, and these are all holiday themed stamps and i'm just going to fill up this block completely there we go and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my first fine claire in an orange so the same color and i'm going to ink it up since these stamps are brand new, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a scrap piece of paper and just stamp it off. It's always a good thing with, with new stamps to stamp it off first. And in this case, I can also check whether the text is correct. Yeah, this is gonna be fun. Good, so I'm gonna ink it up again. And I'm going to stamp that at the edge here of the orange page. You will only see a little bit of this, but it's just gonna give it a bit of fun dimension. Line it up again and press. And it doesn't have to be perfect because you, you will hardly see it, but it's just giving this orange page a bit of dimension. And the final bit here. go. Now since this is pigment ink, I'm going to let that dry for a bit. Now I'm going to show you why I think this is fun. 
look, this is just peeking out and it's, you can't even read it, but it's just giving some dimension to the page. So next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be etching, since I've got my mat here anyway, uh, I'm gonna be etching the edges of these pages using Freight Burlap. What I like about this is that it's hiding the white core of the paper and it's giving it a bit of a grungy vintage look, which I don't mind as you, if you follow me, you know. Right, so that's that. I'm gonna do the same to this one. So now it's time to put this together. And what I like is that the orange is peeking through here as well. And I've got some other orange elements that will come back on the page. So it'll pull it all together. But now, let, first let's put on some glue. And I know I can use tape to put them together, but yeah, I just like to use glue because it gives me some wiggle time. Since um, I want this to be on there straight, of course. Oh. I'm gonna take my pages, line up the holes because if the lines if the holes are lined out, your page is lined out. S sounds simple, but it is. <laughs> That's how it works, at least for me. Look, perfectly aligned holes. And then I'm just gonna press this down. I think this is coming together nicely. Um, now, while I've got my frayed burlap out, I'm just gonna grunge up some elements. So what I've done, I've die cut the house and the chair with the dies that come in the set. The chair, like this. The chair, the house, and the umbrella I've cut out but the umbrella I've actually cut out from some uh, fun paper with some color, but I do want this to have a bit more of a grungy look as well, uh, because this is too clean for me. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna edge that umbrella and the house and the chair as well. Now, let me explain what I did here. I've cut out this chair uh, with adhesive backing on the back, the Elizabeth Craft Design backing of a adhe clear adhesive. Then I've stuck that on, uh, on black cardstock and cut around it. So it's, it's back to black cardstock uh, to really pop off the page. So those are gonna be on here, like this. The house is gonna be here, chair is gonna be here, in front of the house. The umbrella is gonna be there as well. This page is already coming together quite Quickly. What I've got as well is these little things. Um, the citrusy thingies that I've cut out with adhesive backing, which makes it a lot easier to stick to wherever I want to put them. Um, and I'm going to stamp out uh, another stamp. So let me do that first, because then we can st really start to put this together. I'm going to be using this stamp set. And that's the, uh, and I'm gonna use vacation mode on. I'm gonna be stamping that on this piece of cream colored paper. And I'm gonna use the same orange Versafine ink for that. This is quite a solid stamp, and um, but I don't mind if it looks a bit crunchy, a bit distressed, as they say. But I think it'll be fine. So stamp that on there. Perfect, love it. So now I'm gonna take my little trimmer. And cut this. Lovely little trimmer. I'm gonna leave a bit at the bottom because it's gonna go under the picture. So uh, that's not that important. Okay, so I've put my inking mat to the side and I'm gonna build this page up. So I'm gonna start putting on the whole reinforcers. 
got them in my little pizza box there. These are really handy to uh, when you die cut all your pieces in preparation. They are perfect to put them in. Now I've cut out the whole reinforcers again with the backing on the back and that makes it very handy to put it all together. It really goes quickly. Um, and having a die set that is designed like this really helps. Uh, anyway, I always think that whole reinforcers finish the pages off really well. Okay, whole reinforcers are on there, check. Next, I'm going to put on the house. I'm gonna take out my glue. I'm gonna glue that on, line it up at the bottom. And I do want some of the green showing. These houses are fun. You can also, you can do so much. You can cut several houses out. You can make fun cards, holiday cards uh, with this as well. So that's on my list to do. But there's so many new dice that yeah, there's a lot you can do with it. It's really fun, right? The little chair is gonna be in front of the house, slightly overlapping, Oop, there we go. And then I'm gonna put my um, umbrella that I've cut out of uh, fun paper, which is already adhesive back, so that's easy. I'm gonna slide that behind here. That looks like fun, right? Then I've got two little light blue pieces that I'm gonna put in there. Fun, 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 fun. Isn't that fun? I think it is. So next step is I'm gonna do another stamp. I'm gonna use another stamp um, just here on the side because I want that orange to come back a bit in the background. And I'm gonna be using this stamp. It's a very nice vintage looking stamp with a sort of a calendar theme going on. That's what I want on there. Um, just wanna make sure it's on my block straight. There we go. I'm going to use the first of find again. And then I'm going to line it up correctly. Hmm. Press it down. Wow, perfect. These stamps are, I mean, they're brand new. Look at the detail in this stamp. Even though the finest letter print um, is stamped perfect. Look here, this, the details. You can actually read it. Crazy, it's fantastic quality, these stamps. I really like them. Right, so that's on there. So we're getting there, we're getting there. Next, I'm gonna take this picture. I'm gonna put that on there. This is a picture from a holiday. I thought it was appropriate uh, to put that on here. So I think that can go, that can go here. And I want that slightly under that umbrella. Line this up and put the umbrella over it again. And then I'm going to take my stamp application mode on and I'm going to put that under the photo at the top. Like this. And next I'm going to take my little citrus. I cuts. I'm going to put them on the page. Pulling back some of that green color and some of the orange again. And I've used all elements from this die set now. Now, of course, in this collection, there's so many die sets that you can combine, you can use everywhere. Um, but I just wanted to stick to using the 
Of course, you can combine all the different elements from all the different sets, but I just wanted to stick to using all the dice from one set because not everybody has all the sets. So I just wanted to show you what you can do with one die set. There we go. I think this page is done. I think it is. So I will get my stuff out for the second page I'm going to make, and then I will be right back. Okay, so here I've got everything that I need to put this page together. Um, and I've used several dice, I think all of them actually, from this, uh, this set. And I'm going to uh, show you how I will assemble this. I'm going to put this to the side. If I need it, I can grab it. Um, first things first, I'm going to grunge up the page because, well, you know, that's me, right? So I'm just quickly going to do that using Freight Burlap again. This is a beautiful die set as well. And it's really uh, fun if you're on a cruise or uh, just by the sea. Uh, yeah. Again, holiday mood written all over it. And this is cut out of some paper that is from a collection that's unfortunately no longer available. Um, but I just thought it was a beautiful paper. So um, that's why I used it. Okay, so that's ready to go. Um, next, I'm gonna cut out my pictures. I'm just gonna use my scissors because these are going to be trimmed anyway. So I've printed these off using my selfie printer. Fun little machine, I must say. And very easy to use. Uh, I use print to size to, uh, it's an app print to size. That works fine to, to size these pictures. And I print them actually from print to size to my selfie and without any issues. I know some people have issues with that app, but yeah, I'm lucky. Okay, so on here, there will be different elements, um, like uh, uh, the fish. Um, I have to assemble the rest. The anchor and the steering uh, wheel are uh, not going to be assembled, but the fish needs to be assembled. So I'm going to take the base out, take my tweezers, and I will just put the elements on there. It's very simple lines up perfectly it's self-explanatory if that's correct english um sometimes i struggle with my english um okay so there we go let's put this on you see it lines up perfectly and i've cut this out with the adhesive backing again so boom done it's on there then i'm going to take the mouth put that on there Lining it up again, as you can see, it's quite easy. My thick fingers in a way, okay. And then I've got this little ring. Then I'm gonna put in his eye and the fish is already done. Quick and easy. Um, next, I'm going to uh, work on my picture. See what bits I want on there and what not. And then I'm just going to take my scissors and cut around. And it doesn't have to be perfect because nobody's going to see the back, but this lines up perfect now. now. That's the first picture I'm going to put on there. I might as well do that immediately because then it's on there. Just going to put some glue around the hole. Line up the picture again, and that's already on there. Simple as that. So I'm going to take my second picture. These pictures are actually when we were on a cruise. I just thought that this was appropriate. This was a Nile cruise we did. This was the boat we were on. Uh, it was a fantastic trip, but I just thought it was fun with this theme to have it on there. So I'm just going to again trim around and put that on there there we go 
Now we can actually put the page together. So I will put some glue on the back. And you can see my messy cutting of the picture, but hey, nobody will see that once it's on the page. Line up the holes. So assembling this is quite similar to the first one I did. But that's why I'm going through it quite quickly. And it's nicely coming together. Now, in the middle here, I will put a uh, piece that fell out when I was die cutting uh, these elements. I will just put that in there because in the middle, there's going to be a text circle over it. So this will be a nice background for that. Base page is now ready to go. And I don't need, I, I'm not going to do any stamping on the back here because. This page has already got a lot of different elements on it. It looks uh, uh, finished already. So what I will do now is put on the whole reinforcers. And these are fun. These are like little photo cameras. And I've cut them out using the adhesive backing and I've crunched them up a bit while they were on the paper here. Um, so they've got a bit of a crunch to them already. These are really fun little elements. These are actually in the die set. Here you have them. So very nice that that comes with it. Okay, there we have it. Okay, the whole reinforcers are on there. The page is put together, the pictures are on there. Now it's time to start working on our uh, portals. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be playing with some heat embossing on this. Uh, and I'm going to be using two sorts of heat embossing, and that's the Distress Embossing Glaze in Rusty Hinge and Salvage Patina. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to take my uh, dauber. This is the Distress Embossing dauber. And I'm just going to press that on here, making sure it's fully covered with that embossing ink. Also, the text should be fully covered. And this dauber is quite convenient for these kind of uh, things. I normally always use the Versa mark, but this one is nice to have for these kind of things. So now I'm gonna take my scrap piece of paper, put some things to the side, make sure I'm in frame. And I'm gonna put these on here, there we go. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take Salvage Patina, open that up. I'm just going to pinch it between my fingers and put it on there. Sprinkle it on there on some places where I think it's fun. And I'm going to do the same here with the other portals. I'm going to be mixing the two colors together. So you will see in a minute, it gives a really nice rusty look uh, and feel to this portal. There we go. Now that's it for the salvage patina. Then I'm going to take my rusty hinge and I'm going to put that on there as well. Now I can be a bit more uh, sloppy with this because it doesn't really matter um, as long as it's completely covered because where the salvage patina is the rusty hinge will not stick anymore so I can just cover the whole bit with this and the reason why I'm doing it like this like it's, it's quite easy if you pick up this now and tap off the uh, salvage patina um, you might think that's easier but it's not gonna work because then the powder will stick everywhere because it slides over the uh, portals. So uh, that's why I'm doing it like this. So it's gonna look withered, distressed, like it's been in the water a long time, like it's been on sea. That's what we look, but that's the look we want. Then I'm gonna take my little tweezers and tap it off. You see? This party mix is going to go in the bin. Um, 
want to save it, be my guest, but that's not me. Okay. So now I'm going to take my Sysix heat tool and I will uh, heat emboss this. I will edit out the footage. So you will be done in a second. Okay, these are nice and shiny and heat embossed now. Now what I've got here is a dauber with um, a bit of the uh, wax paste in a metallic color. From Craft Emotions, yeah. And I'm just gonna see what happens if I go over that. Oh yeah, that looks like fun. I'm not sure the camera is picking this up, but this really gives it, especially the rusty bit, uh, some nice shine. tones down that bright blue a bit. You can see it. It really gives it a rusty, shiny look. That's what I want. I love playing with different structures and with heat embossing powders, and especially with the distress ones. They're just these transparent ones, so they, yeah, you can get some fun looks with it. You'll see it in the pictures when I'm finished. It's really fun and good effect. So I'm gonna take this off. What I always do, I store these uh, foam pads in there, so it, they don't get hard. They're always ready to go. Good, this can go in the bin now. And then we can nearly finish our page. Just one thing to do, and that is to stamp some text out. I'm going to be using two stamps. It's Travel Does the Hard Good, and this is Paradise. Now I'm going to put that on here and line them out so they're on there. And I'm going to be stamping this out using Salvage Patina. So the same color I use for the circles. Because the Salvage Patina is almost the color that's in here as well. So I want to bring that color out a bit more. That's why I'm using Salvage Patina for that. Sorry if my head is out of, in the way again. And commit. And then just cross our fingers and hope it's uh, correct. It is. That's fun. Okay. Next, I'm going to take my trimmer and cut this in half. Well, not completely in half, but you will see what I mean. Line this up. In between these two. and trim. There we go. I'm going to take my uh, dauber with the, what's it called, frayed burlap, and etch the edge of this a bit. And that will pull it together with the page. All the elements are ready now, so now we can assemble the page. And I'm going to start with assembling, putting the circles on my portals. And again, these line up perfectly. So there's no rocket science behind it. It just works. Now, that's what I really love about these die sets from Elizabeth Craft Designs, the ones that Esther designs and the other ones as well. But yeah, the ones that Esther designs, even the complicated ones are in the end, easy, oops, wrong one, easy to assemble. You see, that's why I use glue, because if I would have used adhesive backing on this, it would have been a disaster, because this one needs to go in the middle. It's going to be right in the middle, like so. Cool. Now you see, because salvage patina is in here, that brings out the salvage patina there. That's going to be fun over here. Um, but I've got another fun element that's going to go on these rings. And that's this. Uh, these are all little bolts and screws, etc. And those are meant to go on the rings. So I'm going to take these and put them on there. And I've cut these out of um, some uh, Tim Holtz uh, craft. What's it called? Metallic craft uh, booklets that he has. 
And I'm not sure you can see, but actually it has the little marks on here where you need to put them. So that makes it quite easy to do this. I think that looks really fun. And this one has the bolts. At least that's what I think. That's why I'm putting them there. No, again, no rocket science. You do what you want and where you want to put them. Fun. It's really looking nautical, isn't it? You see the shine on these bolts and the shine on here from the metallic paste and the embossing powders. Love it. Love it. Love it. Right. Um, next thing is I'm going to put the little fishy over here. Then I'm going to put the anchor over here. First, let me put on this. I take my glue. Slightly overlapping the thingy here. And I'm just going to see if I can pop this up. Yes, I can. And put that back over it. So I like it when that overlaps. So that's on there. I like that grungy loop that this has as well. It's coming together nicely. And this one's going to be uh, at the bottom over here. Then I'm going to have my little fishy. I'm going to put that in the middle. that That's my little anchor I'm going to put it at the bottom and again this is cut out with the adhesive on the back I've used the same uh, copper color that I've used for these again that pulls it all back in together and I like the shine Nice and shiny page. And the last one, that's the steering thingamabobbly. And I'm going to put that over here. Okay, so these are the final pages, and I really love how these turned out. These dies from Elizabeth Craft Designs are fantastic. Uh, the Planner Essentials Collections, the new ones, yeah, I really, really love them. So uh, if you like this video, please consider to subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up and uh, that will really help to grow my uh, channel further. Now, if you like something that you saw today and you want to buy something or want to look at it, uh, the links for everything that I've used are below in the description box. So feel free to use those. And that concludes this video. So thank you very much for watching and I love to see you for the next one. Thank you. Bye.